Since we've taken a look at the Camera Raw user interface, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the preferences that can affect our raw workflow. So as noted, we can go ahead and click on uh, this toolbar button, or on the Mac you can press Command K or Control K on the PC to open the Camera Raw preferences. Now these settings are not the defaults, but rather the ones that I typically apply. So let me go ahead and explain why I do this. Under the Save Image settings, these settings refer to all the different things that we're going to apply to the image during this training. So all the basic settings, the curves, the cropping, uh, anything that we do to the image to change its appearance, that's a setting. So we can either save those in a centralized database or we can save them in XMP sidecar files. Now which of these options is right for you is going to depend largely on the type of workflow that you use. If it's commonly the case that you want to share not only rendered files, but you want to share raw files with other parties and you want them to see the settings, you're going to want to choose this XMP option. What that's going to do is every time you edit a file, it's going to create a little text file to go along with it. And inside that text file is going to be all the instructions that relate to the settings that you made. So anytime you want to share things or move things from one computer to the next uh, in your studio or other environment, sidecar files is going to be the way to go. For my case, I rarely move my raw files from one computer to the next and I never share them with third parties. Instead, I share rendered files like PSD files or JPEG files with third parties. So in that case, just so that I don't have hundreds or thousands of XMP files at any given time populating my hard drive, I use the Camera Raw database option. We also have the option to apply our sharpening, which we're going to talk about in the detail panel, to all images or preview images only. So typically, I choose all images. And what this means is it's going to apply sharpening to the preview. And it's also going to apply sharpening when we save our images out uh, as JPEGs or PSD or whatever we're going to use, or when we click the open button and open a file into Photoshop and then save it later. So in either of those cases, the sharpening will be applied and that's what we want. In older versions of Camera Raw, it was sometimes the case that uh, it was safer to use preview images only and then sharpen later. But now the sharpening has gotten so good that it really doesn't uh, behoove you to do that. You'll want to use uh, all images in most cases. Under default image settings, uh, I generally don't ever apply any type of auto tone or auto mix or anything else uh, by default. So that's what these do. If you choose these two options right here at the top, these auto options are going to be applied uh, when you use the tone adjustments or the grayscale mix. I may sometimes go in and click on the auto button manually, either in Camera Raw or Lightroom, but I don't ever want it to happen by default. I want to sort of make that decision on a case-by-case -case basis. We also have the option here to make the defaults in Camera Raw specific to a camera serial number. So this is very useful for people who have multiple copies of the same camera. So if you have uh, three D3s or three Canon 5Ds or whatever you use, you want to be able to create a set of defaults for each camera uh, so that you're not using the same exact settings from one camera to the next. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but the reality is that every camera that comes off the line is going to have a slightly different performance metric when you're talking about exposure and other types of variables that you apply to your images. So it's best to actually have a default setting for each individual camera. Now if you only use one camera of a given type, for example I only use one Nikon D700, what I do is I choose to make the defaults specific to the ISO setting only. Um, and so what that does is obviously when you go up into higher ISO values you tend to change your settings a little bit, especially the detail settings where you're working with sharpening and noise reduction. So I like to keep uh, the defaults specific to an ISO setting. And the Camera Raw Cache is another place where ACR will store information about your files, things like previews, so that after the first time that 
information has been created, the next time you access those things, it's going to be much quicker. So it works in the same principle that a web browser's cache will work. So I'll typically set this around two gigabytes and experiment a little bit, and then occasionally I'll purge the cache if I need to uh, reinstall or move things to a different hard drive. We also have some DNG uh, handling options here. If somebody gives you a, a DNG with the sidecar file, uh, you probably don't want to ignore that. So I leave that unchecked, although just for my own uh, images that I generate, of course, everything is going to be in the Camera Raw database. And then I choose to update JPEG previews to full size. And just like in Lightroom, I like to work with one-to-one -one previews whenever possible, even though that tends to take up more hard drive space and it can slow things down a little bit at different times. I like to work with the full-size previews. Finally, the uh, JPEG and TIFF handling. As of a few versions ago, we can now apply settings to JPEG and TIFF files, which are, of course, rendered files. They're not raw data. What I choose to do is to have Camera Raw open any JPEG or TIFF file that already has raw settings applied to it. So uh, if, if I've got a JPEG or a TIFF that does not have raw settings applied, it will open in Photoshop. If it does have raw settings applied, it will open in Camera Raw. So that basically wraps up our Camera Raw preferences. Next, we're going to jump into some of the tools and start editing.